guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. This is Lisa Larchette. She, this is kind of a sad case. She was arrested yesterday, Thursday morning, uh, December 21st in Polk County. And she's being charged with animal neglect in a horrible hoarder case here in Florida. Now I'm going to play the presser uh, momentarily with um, with uh, Sheriff uh, Grady Judd. And again, this is a very sad one and hopefully this woman and, you know, can recover from this and, and, come, and move on to it. Because obviously hoarding is, is uh, I think it's kind of a mental illness, you know, and I think that she wanted to um, help these animals and it just got out of control. So on Thursday morning, a Polk County deputy sheriff responded to a home on Fazany Avenue in Frostproof to complete a welfare check on a 75 year old woman who was reported to be living there and that there was a possible hoarder situation involving cats at the house. Upon the arrival, the deputy was met by 48 year old Lisa Larchette and in the front yard of the residence. Now, the deputy informed her that he was there to conduct a well-being check on the older woman, which was Miss Larachete's mother. She told the deputy that she was her mother's caregiver and that her mother had health issues. And then she asked the deputy to wait outside while she went inside to get her mother. While the deputy was waiting, he noticed a strong smell of ammonia outside of the residence. Now, this is a double-wide uh, mobile home. Uh, after about 15 minutes, uh, Ms. Larachete exited the residence and informed the deputy he could now enter the home and check on her mother's uh, well-being. As the deputy entered the enclosed front porch, he observed numerous wire cages that contained approximately 75 chickens, peacocks, and ducks. And that's not even all of it. Some of these animals appeared to be malnourished and sick. When Deputy Mills entered the residence, he noticed an overwhelming ammonia odor and observed approximately 50 cats running around the residence, climbing on furniture and sitting on the kitchen counters. He also observed dried feces on the floors and the walls. And the and Ms. Lisa Larachete told the deputy that she rescues cats and then she cares for them as well as the chickens and the ducks. When the deputy made contact with the mother, she advised that she was okay, but the deputy noticed she had glassy eyes and was not easily able to move. After observing the living conditions inside of the home, more Polk County Sheriff's Office staff responded to the house to investigate as well as members of the Polk County Animal Control and the Animal Cruelty Investigations Unit, the Agricultural Crimes, Crime Scene, and Southeast District Patrol. Polk County Fire Rescue also responded to the scene with an ammonia reader, and, they just, and the sheriff's going to go into that and telling you how, how awful the air quality was. They ended up finding multiple chickens, ducks, geese, and a peacock in wire kennels that were stacked two and three rows high on the front porch, dirty water in containers in the pens. All of the pens contained large amounts of feces on the bottom of the wire cages. It appeared the cages had not been cleaned for an extended period of time. An adequate clean exchange of air on the porch. Inside the home, there was a strong odor of the ammonia, as, the, as noted previously, which immediately caused burning and irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat. Obviously, that is not good for anyone, even the animals, to be breathing in. Cats were running loose in the kitchen, the living room, and the utility area. Cats were also observed lying on the kitchen counter, stove, and inside cabinets. A litter box filled with urine and feces inside the pantry in the kitchen. Three cats in kennels, two of which were nursing kittens. Two dogs inside kennels in the living room. Feces on the floor throughout the residence and feces piled up in every litter box in the home. It appeared the litter boxes had not been changed for an extended amount of time, so who knows the last time they were cleaned. There were approximately 10 litter boxes lying down the hallway, all of which were filled with feces and urine. Approximately 50 more cats were located inside the back room of the residence, 
Inside the middle bedroom, deputies found another dog, as well as more chickens and ducks that were in cages and bins. Four cats were observed in another smaller bedroom, which also contained a litter box filled with urine and feces. Additional cat litter boxes were observed inside the back room, again, all of which were filled with urine and feces. All the deputies and staff, they had to wear respirator masks just to go into the home to investigate. Five cats were found to have severe eye, nasal discharge, and respiratory issues, which are common signs of cats that have been exposed to high levels of ammonia for an extended period of time. And the investigation determined there was a lack of clean exchange of air that caused severe and repeated infliction of pain and suffering in at least five of the cats that were in the residence. During an interview, Ms. Larchette admitted that she knew the conditions inside the residence were not good for them or the animals. And she stated that she had been overwhelmed by the amount of animals that she has and it's become too much for her to handle. She did agree to surrender all the animals except for her three dogs and her mother's three cats. In total, there were 142 cats, three dogs, and 164 fowl, which were ducks, chickens, geese, and a peacock that were seized from the property, all that were inside of the residence. And they're also pending a foreclosure hearing on the house. And so there was 309 animals, so over 300 animals inside this double-wide mobile home. So unfortunately, Lisa Larchette was arrested, and she's in the Polk County Jail. So I am going to play the press conference with uh, Sheriff uh, Grady Judd, who goes into even further detail about this case. It's a it's sad, and I think that she had a good heart. And he also talks about that. But people and animals can't live like that. You're not helping anyone when you're hoarding in your house. Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas. And thank you for being with us today. I have Randa from SPCA with me. And as many of you already know, Randa and our Randa and SPCA and Shelly work hand in glove with us and we are thankful beyond words for all of the help that the SPCA and Best Friends gives us dealing with these horrible issues. I'm going to give you a synopsis of this hoarding case we are working. And then Randa will give you more details because we actually received the tip on this case from the SPCA. So we went to do a welfare check because we everyone was suspicious that we had a hoarding case. And when our deputies arrived, we found what one of my very experienced people that investigate from our animal cruelty unit. An unbelievable situation. He said it's in the top three that uh, uh, top three events that I've ever seen. He said it's just words can't ad adequately describe it. So here's what we found out. And I'll introduce you to Lisa Lasherite. Lisa is 48 years of age. She is a second grade teacher at Ben Hill Griffin Elementary School in Frostproof, Florida. She lives on Ficini Drive in Frostproof as well. And as she describes herself, I rescue animals. Well, as we got in to do this well-being check, we found out that she and her mother live in this double-wide mobile home. And as the investigation unfolded, they had 309 animals living inside this mobile home with them. Did you hear what I said? You can't make this stuff up. You know it's got to be true. 309 animals in this mobile home. 
So as we are trying to work through this, we find a 75-year-old lady, her mother. And her mother is also living in this environment. So the two of them are. The investigation started yesterday morning at about 9.50, and, and we are still working now on this investigation as we speak. You can imagine the challenges we have when this 309 animals almost doubles the population of our shelter. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. We seized 142 cats. Of the 142 cats, more than 100 were roaming freely in the house. We seized 164 ducks, chickens, and one peacock and we seized three dogs. Now it's important to point out that Lisa is not an evil person. She is an overwhelmed cat lady. She clearly violated the law. She continued to violate the law. We found cats that were neglected, cats that were significantly ill, She's being charged both with misdemeanor and felony charges as it results as it relates to the animal. In addition to that, she's charged with elderly neglect, which is a felony, because she's the caregiver for her 75-year-old mother. Now, I'm going to go through a couple of the circumstances that we saw immediately. And as they say, you know, this can be upsetting to some people. How about this? Now, understand they're living in this mobile home with the feces all over the place and the urine up and down the wall. Well, how about this one? Here's a cat looking up at the door. Did I repeat enough that they're living in this mobile home you and I can't imagine. Or how about the duck living in this container? These animals were neglected and abused just by the environment they were kept in. Here's an example of a very sick cat. This cat is remarkably ill. The one that I don't think you can ever forget, this is their washing machine. How's that? Do you think they got a feces problem in and around their washing machine? And then there's the big picture. This is the cats on top of the filing cabinet. And all that is going on there. Imagine 100 plus cats roaming freely in a double wide mobile home. Imagine ducks and chickens stacked on top of each other, four and five cages high, that are now defecating and urinating through the open wire down onto the animals before them. Imagine a lady who shows up at the SPCA with 20 or 22 cats to have them spayed and neutered. Imagine that when you drive into the driveway and they live somewhat off of the road and you get out of your car at their fence gate, you can smell the smell from there. We had the fire department come out and do a free air quality test inside the mobile home, and they had as high as 100 parts per million in the urine or the ammonia smell. More than 50 parts per million is hazardous to human and animal health. And this 75-year-old lady who was an invalid and couldn't get around very well on her own, lived in it all the time. And these cats lived in it all the time. 
and these ducks and these chickens lived in it all the time. The people at school said that she smelled all the time. Do you think? I mean, can you imagine? And interestingly enough, the people at SPCA are the experts. When she came in, they looked at the animals, they looked at her, they smelled her and said, this lady's a hoarder. And they were sure that there was neglect going on, and they called us. So I'll have Randa give you the details from SPCA. And once again, I want to thank you and your organization and Shelly, the big boss, who's not able to be with us today because she has other obligations for all of the work you do with us to help us save the animals. Then I'll wrap up talking about what we're going to do and what we need your help with because we have so many animals at the shelter right now. So the beginning of December, this client came in twice with a total of 22 cats to be spayed and neutered. Upon arrival, the odor of ammonia was overwhelming, which is a clear sign we might have some problems. Upon examination of the 22 cats she brought in for spay and neuter, they were in extremely poor condition. There was severe flea infestation, missing fur, uh, upper respiratory with green nasal and eye discharge, and also a lot of wounds from fighting. So noting the very poor condition of these cats and discussing it with the client, she made a comment that the ones still at her property are in way worse condition, which clearly made us realize we need to get animal control involved and do a welfare check on the existing animals on the property due to the ones we just saw, 22 of them, were extremely emaciated and in poor condition. So we did send home medication with the client for the cats um, in hopes that she would medicate them to help with the upper respiratory. With the 22 that we saw, seven of them did get medication. So once we reached out to uh, Polk County Animal Control, we um, will commit to taking the 22 that we spayed and neutered for her in addition to helping them out as well. So here's where we are. Animal control is open the rest of today and open in the morning. Monday's Christmas. If you've thought about or haven't thought about maybe a pet for a loved one, now would be a great time. We need you to help us get the animals out that we have ready to go or that we can get ready to go so that we'll have space for the ones we had to take yesterday. Now, it's animal control, obviously, is going to be closed to the public on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, which are holidays. But Wednesday through next Saturday, once again, will be open. I have waived the adoption fees on all the cats and all the dogs through the end of the year. So come get a, a cat or a dog, a special friend forever. That's going to include all the shots the chips, it's out the door and ready to go at no cost to you. We have an overload right now is because of this rescue that we did. We're doing our best to save all of these cats, all of these ducks, all of these chickens. I'm grateful that Lisa, as I said, she's not an evil person. She surrendered all but three dogs and three cats to us, so they are now legally in our possession. We're going to take the ducks and the chickens to an auction tonight. It's called a small animal auction. It's on, I believe, Highway 542, just east of Cumbie Road. So if you want cat, if you want ducks or chickens, please go there tonight and bid on these birds and because we need to get them into someone's home 
and out of the shelter. That leaves us with, what, 142 cats to deal with. We appreciate SPCA, who's going to take the 22 they originally uh, neutered or spayed, and they're going to help us with some others. But if you, we also have a lot of cats that's already ready to go. If you'll come take those, it'll create more space for these. The investigation is ongoing. We anticipate that Lisa will receive additional charges. We are going to report to, in fact, have reported to the school board. Apparently, her physical condition while she was at work teaching second graders because, as it's explained to me, she smelled horrendous all the time. And quite frankly, when you live in that environment, you can't get clean. And we're, we also want you to know that the 75-year-old mom was taken to the hospital for an evaluation because of the condition she was living in and the condition we found her. Okay, with that, do you have any questions for Randa or for me? Just a quick question. Are any of the cats that were taken from the home already healthy enough for adoption, or are you giving up the cats you already have? We have to process them in. We have to doctor them. We, we see that they've got fleas. The, the short answer is no. We've got a lot of healthy cats that are all ready for adoption. If you'll take those and give us space to, to house these, that would be good because we still have to doctor them. The good news is we didn't find any deceased animals. I think her intent was not evil, but she was clearly overwhelmed, and she didn't cooperate with SPCA, who offered to take them off of her hands. She asked for food, but she would not cooperate with them. She, they asked to go out and take a look. She wouldn't let them come to the house. She knew she had a problem. When we came, she admitted she had a problem, and she turned them over to us. But my goodness, look what position she's put us in. Look what position she's put the cats and the ducks and the chickens in. So now we've got, we're going to fix this the best that we can. We need the community's help. Yes. What resources are available for people who might be struggling or dealing with a similar situation? Absolutely. So we have programs at SPCA Florida that are either free or low cost for spay and neuter services. And we also have a food assistant program for people on any type of assistance that qualify. And once a month, we'll give them a portion of cat or dog food to help them out to feed their pets. So we want the animals to stay in the home, but also to be healthy and in a healthy environment. So we'll try and assist them with different programs that we have. What is the max um, uh, amount of pets that someone is allowed to own in the county? I don't think there is a, a number. There's no limit. You have to certainly be able to take care of them and have the appropriate environment for them, but there's no max. If you happen to have a farm and you can handle five or ten cats and take care of them and appropriately house and feed and physically and, and take care of them and have an environment that's good for their welfare, please come get them. And they're free right now to the end of the year. But I can't overstate how much help that SPCA provides for us. But this is a partnership. You can't have dogs and cats that aren't spayed and neutered that continue to have kittens and have dogs and have puppies and have and have and have, and then dump them on the side of the road and expect us to magically deal with them by ourselves. This is not a SPCA problem. It's not a Humane Society problem. It's not an animal control problem. It's a community problem. And it takes everyone in the community to deal with it appropriately. Now, she's criminally charged. She's gonna gather more criminal charges. We're also going to encourage the school system to look. I mean, she was, let's just call it like she is, she was nasty. And she was 
going in and interacting with second graders? You know, can you imagine sending your child to school and the teacher just came out of this environment that's going to be interacting with and touching your child today? Come on, girl. What is wrong with you? So the investigation is still underway. There's lots of work to do. I love him. Again, I, I know I, I say that every time, but I love, you know, I love him. Come on, girl. Definitely, though. I mean, I, I would not want to be around someone that is in that environment. I, it's, it's unhealthy. It's unsafe. It's disgusting. It's awful. And I, I realized she, she, you know, she meant well at the beginning. It got out of hand. And she, not only is she not cleanly and healthy for herself and her mother, all these animals are in dire straits now. And I think a lot of them would have been better off on the streets. I mean, I'm sure other people would have helped them out. And, you know, you have ducks and what have you. I mean, they could live outside. You know, they fend for themselves all the time. So, yeah, she's uh, she's going to have to deal with that criminal side of things. And I hope that she gets the help she needs. Because, again, I know hoarding, it's a, it's a problem. I mean, we've seen those you know hoarders on on tv you know like on it's been years since i've seen them but you know like on uh hgtv you know they got the hoarder shows i mean you know you, most of us watch those to feel better about how you know we're just so got piles of stuff on you know around our house but man you know you got feces and urine and ugh, it just it makes me you know makes my you know ugh, makes me feel sick but I, I hope she does get the help. She needs to serve her criminal time because it, it was a, it is a crime. But, you know, the sheriff is right. You know, I mean, he, he, he realizes she's not a, necessarily a bad person. She just did something wrong and she's going to have to take care of it. And I hope she comes out of it and she gets the help she needs again. But, yeah. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.